हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर नवीन अग्रवाल आई एम एन इंटरवेंशनल कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग एट वलसाड एंड वापी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ गुजरात माय टॉपिक फॉर टुडेज डिस्कशन इज रिगार्डिंग ए आई सी डी ऑटोमेटिक इम्प्लांटेबल कार्डियोवर्टेड डिफ्लिबेटर्स दिस इज बेसिकली अ लाइफ सेविंग डिवाइस विच इज यूज इन हार्ट फेलियर पेशेंट्स टू सेव द लाइफ ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड टू इनेबल द पेशेंट टू रीच द हॉस्पिटल एंड नॉट टू डाई सडनली एट होम दिस इज लाइफ सेविंग डिवाइस विच इज रिकमेंडेड इन अ लॉट ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर पेशेंट्स I'll be discussing the pros and cons and the pluses and minuses of this device. Which are the patients where exactly this device should be used? Which are the patients who are not candidates for this device? And what are the benefits? What is the cost of therapy? And how exactly is this procedure done? These are the things which we'll be discussing. This topic is especially going to be useful for all my heart failure patients and uh, all the people who want to understand the latest technology in heart failure management and all the life saving technology which is available in heart sa- uh, failure management who exactly are the candidates and which are the patients where they should be done and which where it should not be done uh, the people who are new to my channel i would request them to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of motivation and inspiration to continue making such videos for your benefit in future If at all uh, you subscribe to my channel, you continue to get a notification as soon as we upload a video, and that enables you to take advantage or take benefit of the video by viewing the content as early as possible. Coming back to the topic, जो लोग मेरे channel पे हिंदी भाषी हैं, वो ये content हिंदी में भी देख सकते हैं. ये content हिंदी भाषा में मेरे channel पे उपलब्ध है. नीचे link मैं description box में छोड़ दूँगा. ये content हमने English में shoot किया है क्योंकि हमारे international viewers के लिए उनको facilitate करने के लिए और जो हमारे English भाषी Indian viewers हैं, उनके लिए भी. Coming back to the topic, my topic is regarding AICD device, which is automatic implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Basically, heart failure, the risk of the patient dying is maximum because of sudden cardiac death or cardiac arrest. There is a difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack. Heart attack means vessel getting suddenly occluded, which stops the blood supply of the heart. Cardiac arrest means the heart suddenly stopping because of some arrhythmias inside the heart. Cardiac arrest is much more dangerous than a heart attack because in heart attack the mortality ratio might be 20 to 30 percent and majority of the patients who die because of heart attack are because of cardiac arrest only. Cardiac arrest is like the terminal disease where the heart suddenly stops and the patient suddenly collapses. Cardiac arrest is a life threatening situation because the patient dies within few minutes and if at all the patient is not treated or given appropriate treatment within the next 5 minutes the mortality rate is almost 80 to 90 percent and within 10 minutes if at all uh, treatment is not given majority of the patients will not survive and even if they do survive the chances of them having a good brain status and having a good complete recovery is almost negligible the problem with a heart attack here we are talking about a cardiac arrest is uh, basically ventricular fibrillation we are talking about there is uh, this is a basically a state where the ventricle is not contracting it is just like vibrating and before it ju- just stops so if at this point of time the patient receives a defibrillation shock which is basically a defibrillator is a device which uh, uses a large voltage electric current to restart the heart we use paddles and we put on the chest of the patient and suddenly give the patient a 200 joules of strong shock and this sort of restarts the heart so this changes the electrical stimulus or the electrical pattern of the heart and the ventricular fibrillation can be terminated to an extent of 70 to 80 percent if a tolerator is delivered on time on time means that the shock has to be delivered within the first 5 minutes if at all it is delayed beyond 10 to 15 minutes then the chances of the patient dying on the spot is very high and the patient will not be able to reach the hospital now the problem is the defibrillator machine is not available everywhere and the time which you require to reach to a hospital in any clinical circumstances will be minimum 15 to 20 minutes and even when you reach the hospital it a few minutes will be required by the hospital people to understand the problem take you on the hospital bed use the defibrillator machine and revert the cardiac rhythm so minimum 15 to 20 minutes or even more of the time of the patient is wasted if at all the patient has to be brought to the hospital so this defibrillator device needs to be available at home but the practical problem is it's very difficult to keep the defibrillator device at home and another big problem is that the patient and the relatives have very tough time to understand whether the patient is having a ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation syncope or what exactly is the problem because until and unless you take an ecg or you put the patient on a monitor the uh, relatives will not be able to realize what exactly is happening to the patient because the patient will suddenly drop unconscious or if at all the patient is not having a fibrillation is having just a ventricular tachycardia which is some sort of less dangerous as compared to a ventricular fibrillation but even if that is also occurring patient will not show much symptoms he'll feel some palpitation shortness of breath and heart failure symptoms will be there but uh, if the relatives will have a tough time in realizing what exactly is the patient having and even if the defibrillator device is available at home 
relatives may or may not be able to give the delivery of that device the shock to the patient and even if they do it uh, which relative is available at that point of time whether that particular person is trained in cpr or not that will be a huge factor in deciding whether the patient's life can be saved or not majority of the times you will have a bad scenario and which the patient's life will not be able to be saved so aicd is this device which circumvents this problem it sorts out the problem it is basically a defibrillator device which is small battery sized device which is uh, placed into the pectoral muscle of the chest cavity uh, the muscles of the chest cavity and by a small incision under local anesthesia the patient has to be admitted for 2 to 3 days it is a device similar to a size of a matchbox which is put into the pectoral muscles and the lead is implanted into the heart of the patient this device performs two functions it senses what sort of rhythm is prevailing in the heart and once it senses that something abnormal is going on inside the heart it delivers a uh, some sort of tachycardia pacing is also done to see whether the patient can be the rhythm can be restored by some maneuvers if at all it cannot restore the normal rhythm of the patient by some electrical maneuvers then uh, it delivers a cardiac shock which is a small lesser voltage shock but it is delivered directly into the heart so it reverses the heart rhythm and makes it normal the defibrillator which we use externally uses a 200 joule shock the defibrillator which is used inside the heart that is the aicd device delivers a 16 to 20 joule shock the current is much lesser but because it is delivered directly inside the heart the efficacy is much more the success ratio of an aicd reverting a ventricular fibrillation into a normal sinus rhythm is around 80 to 90% it may not be 100% effective all the times but usually even if it is uh, successful 90% of the times these are the patients where exactly the life of the patient is saved and it gives the patient time to reach to the hospital because if at all the patient is having a ventricular fibrillation there is no means by which the patient can reach the hospital in time and can be saved and this is the only way or the only device which can save the life of this patient the patient uh, for the uh, deployment of the aicd device requires to be admitted in the hospital for 2 to 3 days under local anesthesia a small incision is given to the shoulder and a, a device is placed into the muscle and a lead is put into the heart and it is fixed into the heart muscle the precautions after the uh, aicd device are similar to what is seen with the pacemaker device i have made a separate video for precautions after the pacemaker device which you can see on my channel uh, aicd device the precautions are similar the patient has to be admitted for 3 to 4 days inside the hospital and uh, has to follow similar precautions as compared to a pacemaker the biggest problem with the pacemaker or the aicd device is the cost of therapy the cost of therapy usually for a single chamber pace aicd device is around uh, 2.5 to 3 lakhs and for a double chamber aicd it is around 4.5 4 to 4.5 lakhs in various hospitals which includes the implantation charge and the device charges for different companies and different configurations of the device and different types of leads of the device the cost may be varying in uh, several patients there is a bipolar lead quadripolar leads and mri compatible device non mri compatible device battery life might be variable so in different sorts of devices the uh, type of the uh, therapy might be and the cost of the therapy might be significantly different from hospital to hospital and from device to device so uh, we cannot compare exactly unless we are comparing uh, the same device in different hospital we cannot exactly compare the cost of the therapy in various hospitals but the biggest problem why this device is not used in all the patients of heart failure is that uh, the cost of therapy because the number of lives which is saved by this therapy is not very high usually uh, one in five or six patients during uh, this therapy that is 15% out of 100 patients does require this therapy and uh, the mortality rate or the mortality uh, lives to, which are saved after the ic device as was shown in the madet trial was 16% uh, mortality benefit was shown that is uh, sorry uh, it was 6% around that is one in 16 patient where aicd device is implanted one life is saved for every 16 devices so if at all the patient is paying that big amount of money and over a period of time no ventricular fibrillation occurs in the patient or nothing abnormal happens to the patient the patient tends to feel that the amount of the money was wasted because this device does not improve the pump function of the patient it only uh, works when the patient is having a uh, low heart rate or a high heart rate it can also pace the heart when the heart rate is low it can also revert the heart rate when the heart rate is high so it can perform both the functions but it will only be functional when the patient is having some rhythm problems it does not do anything to improve the pump function of the heart to improve the pump function of the heart there is another device which is a triple chambered pacemaker known as the uh, crt device that we'll be discussing on a separate topic which you can see on my channel 
but this device does not improve the pump function the problem with this therapy is that it gives almost a 90 percent guarantee of survival but it does not make the person immortal the patient can still die because of heart failure some amount of arrhythmias even despite whatever therapy you give the patient the patient might still die so it does not the, make the patient immortal and in indian scenario a lot of patients once they have spent this amount, amount of money they tend to expect very strong and very positive results and they expect the patient to become immortal so because of the cost effective uh, ratio is not very good for this device that is why the reason a lot majority of the patient is not used it can be used in any patient who has have a who does have a very significant heart failure there are two types of indication one is primary prophylaxis one is secondary prophylaxis primary prophylaxis means any patient where a tachycardia has not occurred before any syncope or giddiness episode has not occurred before so patient is not at a very high risk but heart failure is there heart pump function is less than 35 percent multiple ectopics or some problem is already on the site the patient has a high risk of developing some of sort of arrhythmia but not very high risk so these are the patients where you can use it in primary prophylaxis in indian scenario we are not using it very commonly in a primary prophylaxis because the number of lives which is saved in a primary prophylaxis scenario is much lesser as compared to when we are using the device in a very high risk patient which is the considered the secondary prophylaxis for the use of device secondary prophylaxis means the patient has already had an episode where the patient has a cardiac arrest and has survived the cardiac arrest or a ventricular tachycardia has been documented on an ecg or the patient has had a episode where the patient has suddenly collapsed outside the hospital and suddenly somehow the patient has survived and reached the hospital and there are very high chances that the patient might have a second similar episode so in these patients we tend to recommend an aicd device this is considered secondary prophylaxis and in indian scenario secondary prophylaxis patients usually uh, aicd is used much more often in these patients as compared to the use in primary prophylaxis uh, if at all the shocks are delivered to the patient the patient develops some sort of painful sort of a thud or a push the patient experience uh, it is moderately painful not very painful but if you deliver, even if you deliver an external shock or internal shock it is painful to the patient sometimes it happens that the patient is having multiple episodes of ventricular tachycardia which the device is not being able to com, uh, convert with the using of pacing maneuvers then the patient requires to uh, the machine requires to deliver shocks and these shocks can be multiple sometimes the patient goes into a vt storm vt storm is a, a problem where multiple episodes of vt are occurring to the patient and uh, in these patient the machine keeps on delivering the shock this can be extremely bad for the patient because every 5 10 minutes the patient uh, machine is delivering a shock and the patient sometimes develops a sim- very bad psychosis and he comes to the hospital and he is not able to tolerate the pain of the device so although the machine is de- uh, has to be tested in such condition that some technical problem has not occurred in the machine if at all the machine is delivering the shock at the right point of time uh it is actually saving your life but the problem is that if multiple shocks have to be delivered then the patient has to be admitted and some other parameters have to be changed or machine device settings have to be changed or some medicines have to be added to the patient to reduce the uh, incidence of ventricular tachycardia to save the patient usually this sort of vt storm occurs only in patients where the pump function is very bad or in patients where some electrolyte abnormality is occurring or some heart attack has occurred which leads to multiple episodes of vt and in these patients so many type episodes of ventricular tachycardia occurs that even the machine can't do much it keeps on shocking the patient and the patient keeps on going back into the ventricular fibrillation and eventually the patient might even die so uh, these shocks are moderately painful but if at all the patient does develop very uh, many number of shocks are delivered to the patient the patient has to immediately rush to the hospital and get the device interrogated and evaluated because uh, machine settings have to be changed sometimes and medicines of the patient have to be changed and uh, patients uh, other functions and parameters have also be to be checked if at all the patient is developing uh, aicd related shocks are to be delivered to the patient so uh, AICD device does not guarantee survival it reduces the uh, it improves the survival chances of the patient but it does not make the patient immortal medicine are not reduced even after an AICD implantation although some sort of anti arrhythmics which are given to the patient to reduce the incidence of arrhythmias they can be reduced but other heart failure disease modifying agents and pump function which are uh, improving agents which are delivered to all heart failure patients these devi- uh, these medicines have to be prescribed to all patients even after an AICD insertion Usually the AICD battery works for around 10 to 12 years similar to a pacemaker and after 10 to 12 years the battery has to be changed and then again it can function for another 10 to 15 years there are two types of 
pace maker single chamber and double chamber single chamber has a single lead which is put into the ventricle and it can uh, sense and shock the patient double chamber is a, as a double lead where a lead is put in the right atrium and a second lead is put in the right ventricle it can do a sim uh, much better job and much more physiological pacing job as compared to a single chamber but usually the cost is higher as compared to a single chamber pacemaker so routinely majority of the patients in indian scenario who are receiving pacemaker uh, aicd devices are usually receiving single chambers patients who are affordable or have a medi claim or patients who want the best of state of the art therapy they can go in for a double chamber pacemaker but uh, the life saving benefit is all uh, slightly better for a double chamber but also the single chamber is doing the job in majority of the cases so even if you get a single chamber pacemaker uh, aicd device implanted in your body it is sufficient in a majority of the cases and usually you do not uh, spend a extra 1 lakh rupees to get a double chamber aicd except for the patients where uh, pacing indications are very high or patients who require have a bradycardia also and the pacemaker function of the aicd is also to be required in a lot more majority of the time these are the candidates where a double chamber aicd is better suited or in patients where atrial arrhythmias are common these patients may require a double chamber aicd but majority of the times in indian scenario we are using a single chamber aicd usually after a heart attack uh, aicd device is not inserted into the patient for the first few days if at all the patient does develop multiple episodes of ventricular fibrillation then the device can be deployed because the patient might die immediately after the discharge and majority of the deaths after a heart attack usually occur in the first few days of a heart attack so these are candidates for aicd implantation if at all the patient is developing multiple episodes of ventricular fibrillation even after angioplasty if the event is occurring then they are candidates for aicd implantation if before angioplasty and uh, at the first time of admission of heart attack the patient develops a ventricular fibrillation usually these are the patients who are not candidates for aicd therapy uh, only the patients where recurrent episodes are occurring and the patient after plasty also is developing uh, episodes of ventricular tachycardia which is not being able to be managed by a uh, medicines then the patients can be considered for an aicd device uh, if at all patient has having a severe pump function this uh, pump uh, left ventricular dysfunction is there and the lvf is less than 35% then the patient can be put in aicd prophylactically also because these candidates are much higher chances of having arrhythmias and dying suddenly at home so aicd device can save a lot many of these patients and keep them alive for a longer period the topic for today's discussion was regarding automatic implantable cardioverter defibrillator that's an aicd device and i've tried to discuss the basic concept what exactly is the device what are the types of aicd device what are the pluses and minus why exactly it is used and why it is actually it is not used very often in an indian scenario what is primary and secondary prophylaxis for the use of aicd this we have discussed i hope i've been successful in making the concept relatively clear the concept of my channel is that i want to make scientifically correct and useful information easily available to my audience so that they need not have to run in several places to gather this sort of information because uh, people are dependent on doctors and friends and relatives for such sort of information doctors because of time constraint can may or may not be able to deliver all the information to you and friends and relatives sometimes may have a partially correct information and following such instructions from friends and relatives might sometimes be detrimental to the interest of the patient and the, the condition of the patient might actually deteriorate if you follow the instructions of these patients if at all you like the concept of my channel i would request you to like my video subscribe to my channel and if you at all you feel that the content is useful for your friends and relatives you can share the link of these videos with your friends if you feel that the uh, uh, you have some queries regarding to the topic if you want uh, us to discuss more topics in our subsequent videos you can mention about this topic in our in the description box and in future we can uh, make videos on this topic and we can cover those topics also and we'll try to answer to all the questions and queries which you are putting up on, on my comment section so that you can uh, understand the patient uh, uh, your patient better and manage your patient in a better way so i i am dr navin agrawal and thank you all for a very patient listening and i am very grateful for you that you have been able to understand and uh, the concept of aic device and you have seen the video till the complete end of the video uh, the people who are new to my channel i would request them to subscribe to my channel as, as this gives us a lot of motivation and inspiration to keep on making such good videos with good and scientifically correct content for your benefit thank you